Let's practice predicting the products of E2 reactions using different types of bases. Remember in the E2 reaction, we are going to be removing the leaving group, in this case, the iodine. I'm gonna highlight its carbon. And we're also gonna be removing a hydrogen from any carbon that is adjacent to the carbon with the leaving group. Let's start by drawing hydrogens onto the carbon atoms, available hydrogens, hydrogens that are susceptible to being grabbed in the E2 reaction. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible hydrogens. Now, if you're looking very closely, these three hydrogens and these three hydrogens are actually identical to each other due to the symmetry of the molecule. Both of them are a CH3 that's attached to the carbon with the iodine, a CH3 that's attached to the carbon with the iodine. So uh, whether we remove one of these three hydrogens or one of these three hydrogen, the outcome would be the same. So in order to keep this a little bit easier to look at, I'm just going to remove three of those hydrogens. We'll just pretend like they're not, they're not there. So let's go ahead and draw one of the possible products of this reaction where we would grab this particular hydrogen right here. The carbon hydrogen electrons come down to make a carbon carbon double bond and the leaving group goes away. And let's draw the product that we get from that reaction. And I'm gonna draw in hydrogens that I started with that I didn't remove. Um, almost forgot my methyl group. There it is right there. So there's one possible product. And then the other possible product of this reaction would be if the OET group grabbed the other hydrogen, those electrons, carbon hydrogen electrons moved in to make a carbon carbon double bond. And again, the leaving group goes away. And what does that get us? That looks like this. We'll draw in the hydrogens that are not removed. There is our two possible products. Let's, um, before we move on to the next example, let's predict of these two products, which one is major and which one is minor. Now, in order to do that, we have to analyze the base that we're using in this particular reaction. This base is called ethoxide. It's a very common base used in the E2 reaction. And the ethoxide base is not terbutoxide. When we're dealing with anything other than terbutoxide, the major product of the reaction is the alkene that is the most substituted. So we're looking at the carbon-carbon double bond and we're asking ourselves how many R groups are on that double bond? How many hydrogens are on that double bond? The carbon-carbon double bond with the most R groups is going to be the major product when we are not using tert butoxide. So here in our first, we have two R groups on our alkene. And in our second product, we're looking at our carbon-carbon double bond. We have one, two, three R groups and one hydrogen on this particular alkene. So this has three R groups. And again, when we are not using tert butoxide, our major product, the product that has the most R groups or is the most substituted, that's referring to having the most substituents. The most substituted product is our major product, and the other is our minor product. Let's take a look at this next example. We have, again, we have the exact same alkene, which means we don't need to draw the mechanism again because we know that it's going to make the exact same two possible products. The products are being dictated by the structure of the alkyl halide. And so again, we want to look at of these two, which is our major product. Here we are using tert butoxide and tert butoxide gives the least substituted alkene as our, oops, as our major product. And the most substituted alkene as our minor product. And our explanation for that is that because this tert butoxide is such a bulky 
awkward base. It has a much easier time grabbing a hydrogen from a carbon that's at the end of a carbon chain and has a harder time coming into the inside of a molecule and grabbing a hydrogen from the inside. So with tert-butoxide, our major product is the least substituted or has the fewest number of alkenes. And we actually have additional ways of labeling the major and minor product. Rather than calling them the major product and the minor product, we have um, other names for them as well. The most substituted alkene, whether it's major or minor, is also called the sate cef product. That's pronounced sate cef And the sate cef labeling this as the sate cef product, has nothing to do with whether it's the actual major or minor. This is just another way of labeling our products. So the sate cef product is always going to be the most substituted product. always the most substituted. So again, the state cef product, it doesn't matter if it's major or minor, it is just the most substituted product. And our least substituted product is sometimes called the Hoffman product. So this can sometimes be a little bit confusing for students because you can be asked for, a, for an elimination reaction. You could be asked for this reaction, draw the major product, or you could be asked to draw the minor product, or you could be asked to draw the Hoffman product, or you could be asked to draw the Sate-Seff product. And because those are two different concepts, it's important that you're going to be able to remember which is which. Hoffman and Seitzef refer only to how substituted the product is. Major or minor is a combination of substitution and what type of base you're using. So again, the uh, bulky base gives the least substituted as the major product. All other bases gives the most substituted as the major product, regardless of base. The most substituted product is always going to be the Seitzef product, regardless of base. The least substituted product will always be the Hoffman product.